recently as I did. So look at the dye booth. Check it out. Hanging out, everybody. This is where all the cool kids hang out. And again, I've done like four interviews with Die today that are um, going to be posted later. One of them here with Billy. If you looked at the Instagram feed recently, Billy and I, I took a little selfie and let everybody know that's coming. That was like a 25-minute interview that we shot, and it's really a deep dive paintball talk. You guys are going to love it. We talk about all their new uh, their, their new initiatives, uh, their philosophy behind their guns, and the customer service. So it's, uh, we might find more interesting than it sounds on the surface right now um, because of the philosophy and the way uh, ownership of die works in terms of a, as a gun owner. But I'm trying to find my contact is they're all busy I mean I can't even let you talk to these guys I really wanted to go over some of the dye products but we did get a couple showcases earlier with them so the show here is a little busier than it was earlier because I guess it's getting towards the end of the day people are able to get here from work but we also had a big snowstorm today I almost didn't make it here so I'm going to see if I can butt in so you think I can still Billy for a minute here sure I appreciate it well, you know, we're live on Facebook. We okay. got people watching. And I've been trying to uh, break into one of you uh, die guys for a while. Okay. So, well, Billy, um, give, give everybody a quick tour. All right. Quick tour of the die booth here. Yeah, man. Why not? Uh, what are we? 2019 Paintball Extravaganza, the Dealer Expo. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a smaller booth this year, but, uh, you know, it's packed with features. It's kind of hard to navigate through, but we've got all these here I5s, R2s, uh, the gun line of the M3. Plus and the DSR, the Rise Max underneath it. Well, we want to talk about the uh, the M uh, for, for a little brief moment again. Yeah, can, well, we, can, we, can we showcase that at all? Or well, why don't we touch on the DSR? Oh, hey, I love to talk about the DSR. That's my gun, there, man. Grab a pretty one. If I can get more people to buy a DSR, I'm happy. So DSR is our mid mid level gun. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about it. The Working really Man's Tournament Gun. Yeah, it's uh, it's really starting to gain some traction and some notoriety as being just a really a real good workhorse gun. It's very reliable, very smooth, accurate, very little recoil, great air efficiency. Uh, you know, you're talking 12, 12, 13 pods, like just amazing air efficiency. A really small, lightweight gun. All the performance features you need, without a lot of the unnecessary bells and whistles or luxury features that that drive cost up on guns or just kind of cause unnecessary complications. You know, it's just it's a real simple bolt kit, push button release. Uh, you know, just, what, so what engine do we got in here? What's this the engine? Is, we call we call this the arc bolt. Uh, just a, a pretty pretty simple bolt kit. Very reliable. Doesn't take a lot of grease to keep going. Doesn't really take much anything. The gun itself, as a whole, is dwell and sensitive. Uh, basically, means that once the bolt starts on its forward cycle, it's going to return on its own, regardless, and, and shut the valve off, regardless of what you have your dwell set. At. So again, it's, it's all about keeping the gun working in pretty much any condition. Uh, you know, and just being a workhorse that, that really performs well. A bit of a, a, bit of a sleeper. Um, you could say that, but this is Danger Man's gun, guys. I, um, not in blue, but um, I happen to love my DSR. Um, if everybody knows my history with the axe, um, this is kind of like uh, where I'm at now. I'm, uh, you'll probably see me sporting this baby for years. And that, to me, that's the way to own a paintball gun. You, uh, you, you know, you develop a relationship with it, and uh, you, you know, you can shoot any paintball gun good. But quite frankly, you know, if you, if you put the time in with it, uh, this particular gun is special. Um, you said 12 to 13 pods. It's a case of pain, isn't it? It's pretty close to a case of pain. Okay, pretty close. So I don't know how you guys could possibly um, think in terms of uh, any, um, you know, if you're out in a scenario game, why this wouldn't be a good workhorse for scenario as well as your crossover into your tournament ball. But to me, as a woods baller, I love this gun. And it's, it's also great. The air efficiency is also key if you're, you're practicing or you're just out of the day at your local field and they're not giving full fills. You know, maybe you're only getting 3,000 psi or something like that. You're still going to be able to carry plenty of paint to have a good, a good game or you know, good outing out in the field. So uh, another, another quick point on this gun is the simplicity of service. Uh, one, one Allen wrench disassembles the whole gun, and then past that, you only need one other Allen wrench to do a full disassembly of like the solenoid, the circuit board, and all that stuff. Well, how are you going to go that far and say uh, two Allen wrenches? What are the, what are the sizes? Uh, three, <laughs> second, and five sixty-four. There you go, guys. That's really all you need. 
and that's going to be on your uh, multi kit, uh, multi multi, yeah, multi tool. All the parts, all the parts, spare parts, uh, tools that you need come with the gun, of course. Yep. So buy yourself a so, die multi tool, and you're set. Yep. So that's that's the VSR. Uh, of course, we've got the M3 Plus up top. That's our flagship marker that does have all the luxury items, the bells and whistles, you know, wireless charging, uh, Bluetooth, the full-color LCD screen. Now, Billy and I did a talk earlier. It's going to be on YouTube soon, about a 25-minute discussion here at the booth on a number of dye products, and we got into this particular marker in detail, so please look for that YouTube video soon. And then, in fact, and the M3 Plus itself actually gets better air efficiency than the DSR by a notable amount. Oh, okay, great. Now, now I got another, the now I got the gun I don't want anymore. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's, I I happen to love my DSR. I have a no mood to trade my DSR. It's a classic arms race. Right? There you that's, go. That's what we're all hoping for. So um, obviously our gun line, we're we're proud of it. It's it's my passion. The guns. It's what I what I I grew up loving about paintball, the tinkering, the tuning, and. And now I got basically really just kind of get to enjoy the, the dream job of, of being an overgrown kid, working on my overgrown toys. Now, so. um, you know, we shot this video earlier and people have got, got to know who you are, Billy, but there's people here now who won't know who you are. Billy, what's your history in terms of the sport paintball? Where do you come from and uh, what, what, what's your history, like all the way back to the beginning? Oh, all the way back to the beginning? Uh, boy, well, I started playing paintball with my buddies, just my, my middle school buddies back when I was like 14. Uh, just kept playing, got into the local tournament scene. Uh, when I was about 20, I got got in with uh, the Ironmen uh, up in Northern California, started playing with them, got noticed by them, got picked up by them, got to know Dave Youngblood, who owns Die, uh, and then through knowing him and working at other local paintball stores, I got hired by Die. 19 years ago now to do build their custom auto cockers and to run production for them and since then i've just grown with the company and now i'm the senior senior project project manager and product developer so say that three times fast yeah lots of p's and whatnot there <laughs> so well you know if you had to pick out a gun over the years what kind of would be your favorite uh honestly I, i'm probably I'm really proud of the DSR uh, because it was the gun that I got to really work on from, from dead scratch. Uh, we built that gun completely from the ground up, really tried to simplify it and build everything. Of course, the M3 Plus is our flagship, but that is a gun that's been worked on in an evolutionary process from the DM15, the, four, the 14, the 15, the M2, and now the M3. So there's a lot of legacy stuff that we kept carrying over where the, DM, the, the DSR was the gun that I got to build from scratch uh, that had all my ideas. And, and I worked with one other guy that, you know, it's kind of our, our baby. When it comes, uh, so, so what was the goal when you guys sat down and said, we're going to make this gun? Oh, you know what? I know what I want to ask. What does DSR stand? I have been dying to know. What does DSR stand for? No one knows. D well, that's kind of the fun of it. Oh God, it's not fun for me. I'm. I, oh, yeah. I, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a scab on the wound that I keep oh. peeling off. It will not heal. You've got to. You've got to tell. Even if it's off, oh. you tell it, guys. I'll see if he'll tell me off camera. Okay. Oh yeah. Honestly, I, I'd have to think about it. It's been. It's been a while since we named it. Oh my God. So. So what was the goal then? When you guys sat down, so we're going to make this gun. Who was it servicing? Who, what was the plan? Well. Uh, you know, as as the paintball industry matures, uh, price points start to develop. Just like in the auto industry, you have very, very specified price points where where different manufacturers have to have a car to compete with other manufacturers. Gun lines the same way. You have your high end, your mid range, your 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 upper mid, your mid, I mean your beginner or, or lower end. And so the goal with this gun was to be the upper the upper mid range have all the performance, all the features that you expect out of a high-end, but not the unnecessary stuff. And then, of course, to make it as simple and as elegant as possible, where, you know, it can be a disassembled, serviced, with, with almost no, no real effort and without extensive education, training, Yeah, I have to say, knowledge. that's the thing I've always loved about most of my die gear. Toolless maintenance is a big deal, and you guys cut it really close every time to, you know, to removing all tools from maintenance. I love it. Uh, okay, we got a couple soft goods here, and then I guess yep. we'll close her out, right? Yeah, so, you know, just as we come around, you know, we're, we're always, we always have our, our core uh, padding line, you know, elbow pads, knee pads, you know, I'm, I'm of course biased, but I, I really feel that our padding is some of the absolute best in the industry. Okay, so if you're biased and you feel it's best, give me a reason what uh, makes, what raises them ab ab above others. Absolutely. So one of the things that 
sets them apart for me is that they're they're more form fitting than most padding on the industry. In the industry, they don't slip, they don't slide. We put a lot more effort into the underside against your skin, so they don't slip and slide, twist, turn, fall down around your your calves or anything like that. They stay in place. They're still soft. Good protection on impact. Also, well, really soft on the forums and stuff to, to help promote bounces and stuff and if, what you, I, you know, if you're if you're playing the right in the edge and, of, and know, what i playing. notice is that they um uh they are not too tight as well so while they fit well they don't yeah. they don't constrict yeah so padding harnesses you know of course you've got our harnesses uh there's the more than you'll ever need harness. Well, you know, the attack pack is probably one of the more more misunderstood harnesses on the market. This was my favorite pack. I used it for years. I don't think I'd use anything else. And what I loved about it so much, it was so low profile. It was so compact. You didn't have stiff uh, stiff form, to, so the pods are easy to put in. You don't have stiff form in, in the straps, and the neoprene and the stretch on the sides as you pull pods, the, har the harness got tighter and tighter and tighter to your body. You became a smaller and smaller target. And in addition, like I said, if you're riding the edge, if you really, you, you know, you're right there on the edge, the neoprene and the way this is, it creates a very soft, padded uh, bounce bounce area. So. You know, so every little bit counts. Every little bit counts. You know, you know, you don't have to come on. You don't have to come out on bounces. And you know, <laughs> it's just you get to play a little longer, and you're, you're not doing anything wrong. You know, I've got an article on the web on the dangerbandslayer.com specifically for controversy because the rule doesn't exist anymore. So let's uh, let's see how you would answer this one based on um, today's date, and that is if a paintball hits you and it breaks, um, but does not leave a mark, are you out? Uh, where I stand on that, and you know, I've been playing for a long time, and, and the, the rule of thumb that I always went by is it really it came down to the referee. Because I, I've played mostly tournament ball. If the referee sees it hit you and sees it break, and it doesn't leave you know, larger than a quarter mark, it's still his discretion to, to pull you or not, and he has the right to pull you. You know, that, that was how we always ran it by. So if I understand it now, that used to be in the is it P, was it PPL uh, PSP a couple years ago, yeah. Um, that it was a, you know if the referee saw it, you were out. Now I believe as the NXL has it now, they've just completely removed that rule. So at this point, if it bounces off, if it breaks and it bounces off, you doesn't leave any paint. You just play on. And I'm assuming that's because I, I guess players just feel that it was just too much of a, um, a micromanagement in terms of ruling, and it could really. Uh, well, they, they're trying to take out the the judgment call of the referee. Gotcha. They're trying to make it a very black and white, clear cut thing where the refs have no, they, they're, they're, the refs' opinion or judgment. You know the. You know, is not a fact. It makes it a it makes it easier to to apply a standard to an extent. Yes. yes, I get it. I agree. Well, there you go. We had a little fun with this. Um, yeah. uh, Billy, we're going to move on. But okay. thanks for taking time out. Yeah. My Have favorite fun. sponsor. We'll see you guys later. All right. All right. We're going to head back to our first strike. I think. That was oh, don't hate me for doing that. But first strike is the very next video. You're just a click away. It's too much for any man. Hey, if you're digging the content, be sure to subscribe and set alerts, and be sure to visit DangerManslayer.com if you're a true paintball enthusiast. There's a ton of good content there. If you'd like to read as much as you like to watch, it's a great place to head. You're going to get everything from gear reviews, contest updates, and the prizes that I give away, to podcasts with people like Greg Hastings and other paintball notables. Check it out, DangerManslayer.com.